I do it all the Confirm? time. Confirm? Yeah. Gum. He did. Uh, he did. Swallow my gum. Sir, how are you? Yeah. Nick, good. Good to see you, Jim. Introduce yourself to people that don't know you. Luis right here in the microphone. Sanchez, uh, that's who I am, right? With? With Mammoth Quotes. All new, exciting. I was going to say. So the yeah. re- I've known you for a long time. Yeah. This will probably be the longest we've ever talked in person, but sure. that's just the world we live in with p- digital stuff. Well, so we spent we've been, time with the basketball court. We, we weren't talking, been, but we spent man, some time with the basketball court. This guy comes out, play horse, and me and Chris at the time just started playing basketball, and we we're like barely moving around. This guy comes in doing like dolphin. Dolphin shots, Back, like hit yeah. it off his head. I'm like, no, bro. We have I was hitting it off my head. That's my signature shot, by the way. That was a Harlem Globetrotters coming out. <laughs> For a different day, I'll tell you about my Shamu shot. That's a different but, day. But anyway. uh, I did notice you had a new commercial that came out that you yeah. posted up. Super well done. It was Thanks. very creative. Uh, I watched it a few times, and I really liked it because life insurance, sometimes like real estate, is a subject or a world that you know we can try to make it as exciting as we want, but at the end of the day, it's like it scares people. Right. It intimidates them, and it pushes them away from actually making those first steps because it's like, mm, no. So I, so what was the, so what's the idea for Mammoth, and where did that name come from? Tell me everything about the company because you've been doing this for a while. But this nine years. Yeah, I've been in the business for nine years. And so you know, being in the business for nine years, you see people's hesitation. Right. And, and so it's a topic that's tough to discuss. Nobody wants to talk about it. And I tell people joking around when I meet them, like I get the guy that you could talk to about dying and old and sick. Right. Mm-hmm. And nobody wants to talk about that stuff. And so humor, humor is such a great way to connect with people. And so when I look at the industry, I look at all the ads and commercials and the approach, I'm like, there, there's nothing going on that uses humor, mm-hmm. at least in a good way. Right. And so think about when we watch Super Bowl commercials, we're the ones that we talk about. Oh, we talk about the, the ones that make me cry? Mm-hmm. No, we talk about the ones that are funny. And they crack you up and they have nothing to do sometimes with what the product they're selling is. Like Geico, which is like their formula now. Totally. It's an insurance company. And every commercial could be the most ridiculous. It's like, was it, what kind of commercial was that? Was there right. cavemen or was there uh, aliens or was there just, you never know what's going to be in a Geico commercial, which is kind of fun about those. Yeah, absolutely. I love those commercials. They're hilarious. So what was the idea behind this video? Was it kind of like an introduction to the new company? Yeah, so this video uh, is an introduction, correct. And so, you know, I sp- Flattered pain on my face to get people's mm-hmm. attention. They need that stuff. And then also just being real with it and saying, hey, you would rather watch paint dry, I get it, than talk about life insurance. Sure. And people will appreciate the honesty. And for them, it's a relief. Like, oh, dude, this guy gets it. Yeah, yes, that's I would exactly totally what I rather thinking. do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just being honest with people. And so getting their attention and delivering a good message about how important it is. And so, again, being in the business for nine years, I've always been creative. I've always had an imagination and want to do things differently. And so the company I was a part of, fantastic, strong company. I wouldn't know the things I know today and be as equipped to talk about this stuff if it wasn't for them. Um, but when it came to the branding and the marketing side of it, this just, is the way we do just it. like corporate, correct. Just like corporate, you got to align yourself with, with their brand philosophy. And the way that I wanted to break out and do things, just it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And, and not because of anything bad. I just knew that there was greater opportunity for me if I were to pursue this. And many folks around me, my supporters, like they've seen work I've done in the past. They've seen content. They've seen videos. Like, dude, that's good. You should do this and this and this. I'm like, well, I got to be careful what I say, how I say it, and things like that. But now, it's on. There's going to be some Whatever great things that are going to come out. They're going to be hilarious. That are fun and engaging. So that's that's kind of the beginning of it. Well, it's like what you said about life insurance. It's a thing people don't want to talk about as we unfortunately get older. And I love in the bit where in this video you made, he's like, yeah, I'm 35. I'm super buff. <laughs> and uh, my policy is only going to be $21 a month to get half right. a million. Yeah. All right. Here, here's the yeah. truth. I'm really for I was like, he's 35. <laughs> but <laughs> call me out. Those simple, those simple numbers and seeing it, yeah. how it breaks down. It's like, yeah. And you said it. Uh, it costs less than all your streaming services. Like, yeah, yeah, I spend $50 on random shit every single day. Correct. And people... What do you think it is that people hesitate from going, all right, cool, sign me up? What do you think it is? Is it just culture? Yeah, there's a couple of different things behind that. So one is culture, right? Cultural awareness. People are just not even aware. It's not on their radar to think about this stuff, right? And life insurance only comes up and is purchased in two different ways. That's it. It's because something happened, good or bad. I'll talk about that too. Or because you got approached, yeah. right? So industry standard really is an agent shaking hands, belly to belly, across the table. Let's talk about your financial future. Let's talk about foundation stuff, insurance protection, right? That's one way that it's sold. The other one is we have such optimism bias, meaning that we don't think anything bad's going to happen. We don't not. like thinking that way. So when I say it's bought because something happened, good or bad, it's either the bad tragedy There's happened death. around you. Correct. Now I'm thinking about it. The other thing is I got the phone call. My life just changed because my doctor said, you need to get back here ASAP. But then that also makes it so much harder if you're waiting to that point. For people that don't understand, it's like if you go to the doctor and you're in good shape, guess what? Your policy is going to be awesome. Correct. If you go when you're sick, they're going to go, well, you're sick. 
It's like buying insurance after you get an accident, well, right? It's like getting homeowner's insurance and your home's on fire. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey, I need a policy. Like, bro. <laughs> it's almost the same as getting it when you know a hurricane's coming in. It's like, what? What do you mean I can't change my policy? <laughs> yeah, correct. Correct. You, did you know that? That's a, a rule with yeah. uh, windstorm and insurance. Yeah. You can't, what is it? I think 72 days. If we're 72 days out with a tropical storm, mm-hmm. they, can't, uh, they can't put a policy. They're like, no, we're not. So I didn't know the days, but I knew that kind of was yeah. a general rule, though. And so, again, kind of going back to something happens, right? Good or bad. So the bad, we just describe the good part that sometimes people have enough awareness to move forward with life insurance it's because they got married mm-hmm. right somebody relies on their paycheck the big one is when they have a family because most young people that i talk to they're like no i don't need it i'm fine i don't have any kids but once kids come around then all of a sudden the mentality changes or another life event could be purchasing a home right so folks that have a new asset half a million dollar house whatever the case is comes a liability they got the mortgage and so in the event something happens and and one of those paychecks doesn't come home because of a death like is that surviving loved one going to be able to pick up the tab on the mortgage by themselves because the bank don't care or the lender mm-hmm. don't care? Like, you got to pony up. And so it's always wise and smart when you take on these additional liabilities and purchasing a business and buying an asset through, like, real estate or whatever the case is. So, again, life event, good or bad, is why it happens. And why do people hesitate doing it? Number one is lack of awareness. They don't think about it. It's optimism bias, like I talked about. And the process has been a little tough in the past. And so for some p- folks that are familiar with it, uh, what happens is they got to go get labs, they got to go see a doctor, mm-hmm. they got to go through all these questions and all that stuff. But now these days, you know, what people don't recognize is technology is really caught up in the industry. And there's a lot of carriers that are using these algorithmic underwriting processes. And so now many times I can get somebody, depending on their age and health and, and whatever the case is, $1.5 million, $2 million without having to go pee in a cup or give me blood. How do they do that? Right? Well, they look at different databases that are accessible to them. They go to their Facebook and be like, all right, is this person? <laughs> they look at their lifestyle like, yep, out. <laughs> all right, weekend one drinking, ranking yeah. two drinking. Right, skydiving, bull ride. I don't know about this I cat. always think of, speaking of, we have to, I'm, I'm 80s, we're going to jump around. That's okay. Uh, whenever I think of life insurance, the first movie that comes to mind mm-hmm. is Along Came Polly. Yeah. Because Along Came Polly, if you don't remember, uh, Ben Stiller plays an insurance adjuster. What is he, his job? I think, I think he was like an underwriter is what he, trying to get somebody approved. Yeah. yeah. And so the guy that they're, hey, you need to get this guy. It's a big policy. He's like a daredevil jumping off, right. base jumping, yes. scuba diving with sharks. Like, okay. Yes, absolutely. Right. So that plays into it too, right? It's risk factor. I mean, there's health health risk, there's activity lifestyle risk, and it all goes. Even your driving record matters. Really? Yes, absolutely. The underwriters look for risks. So if you got DWIs, they're like, mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, for sure. Man, I didn't think about that. Yeah, this guy's going to be a little bit risky. So it's all about risk management on that stuff. But also, I think the thing that people have the biggest problem, put that in airplane mode, the reason that you know I got late into it, I wish I would have done it sooner, is that whenever I got into, I guess you can call it the corporate world, first job corporate, I would say, was Best Buy. Never was a thing that I didn't think anybody talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a, it's an old man's thing. Like, I don't need right, that. right. Uh, two, I went to the hospital. Even then... I still didn't get approached by any kind of like life insurance or I just knew, Hey, you, you got to have insurance. It's like, okay. And I right. paid whatever I paid. And then I went to the, uh, the radio, same kind of, I remember, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate. I remember they told us, Hey guys, the next couple of days, one of the insurance providers is going to be here. Kind of go over everything. Right. But she's seeing a hundred plus people a day. She's like, yeah, yeah, here's the da, da, da and go. Right. Benefit stuff. Didn't explain boom, boom, boom. anything yeah. for like years. I didn't know I had one of those cards. What are those cards you can use for medical and uh, prescriptions when you go to H-E-B? Like, it comes up. It says, hey, some items uh, will be called. What's it called? RS? RS? No, not RX. It's like a multiple spending account. It's yeah. like a card. You, my point being is that I had this card uh-huh. when I paid for my insurance policy that was like 1200 bucks a year that I could spend on Band-Aids, any kind of medicine, any kind I would buy anything medical or right. prescription Right, like flex, some kind of flex card. If they say, could, yeah, I don't know, someone should probably yell right now. Anyways, the point is I didn't even know about that. Yeah. So like the person that I was talking to didn't explain it to me. Mm-hmm. The same thing happens in real estate. People will go through the process of real estate and not understand any of it because either they didn't ask the questions or they just didn't know any better or the person helping them didn't give them the info. Right. When I finally, years ago, one of our buddies signed up for life insurance, it had never been explained to me like that. It was always one of those, in my eyes, hey, how would you like to give up more money out of your paycheck? <laughs> right. Because the life I lived before, it was everything came out of that paycheck. It wasn't life now where it's right. like commission-based and, hey, we got cash, we need to move things around, we need to do things for ourselves. It was more, my check's only this big. Yeah. So if I'm taking out another 50, 100, or whatever I well, thought yeah. it'd be, that's not going out. That's not doing all these stuff. That's another things. reason why, by the way. You just said 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever the case is. People are unaware about how affordable it is. Sure. 
And that's one reason why they hesitate. So that's another one. They think, oh, man, Hundreds. it's going to be expensive. Yeah, and I'm never going to see it. You know, what do I pay for my car? What do I pay for my homeowner's insurance? And all that? They compare it to that. But it's so much less than the majority of the other insurances that you pay for. You know, it's Most, of be, the time. Most of the time. You know what's going to be tough about your business is that the conversations you have to have with people prior to them actually using their policies, you know, probably, hey, this is for the best. And they know it's for the best. And then when right. it actually comes to fruition and they use it and they needed it, it's one of those Hey, I, I told you, like I told you, yeah, it, it, it's it, kind of gotta be so tough, right? It, there's a, there's story after story after story of, of agents, right? Who, who go through that. And I've, and I've done deliveries myself and, and I'm grateful that I haven't lost anybody super near family, friends that bought a policy from me. Right. I've had some other individuals, um, that I inherited some of their business and I took a book of business and they had passed, you know, their client passed away and I delivered some, uh, a death claim. But I know of people personally to where the phone call came because budget was getting tight. And they're like, I need to cancel this policy because they're paying X amount of dollars. And this agent's like, I'm telling you, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And so sure enough, whatever it was, six months, a year, two years ago down the road, and it happened, right? A claim was made. The loved one passed away. And they were like, I am, I am so glad. And it, it's super emotional for the agent, right? Super emotional like when we go through that. Because at the end of the day, when that type of stuff happens, everybody's asking for a check, right? The hospital or whatever the case is, the funeral home, we're the only ones that show up with a check. Mm -hmm. And that is impactful to both the agent and also to the client. And so that moment can be very life-changing and altering for, for those of us in the business, yeah. is we see the impact and, and now the financial security that that family has that they didn't have before. Right. So very significant. Very, and you're, very and you are right. And for anybody who's lost a loved one recently and within our family and friends, we've had two people the last couple of weeks and the process went really fast. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is days after it's like, yeah, we're already paying this and we're paying this and we're paying this. And we're, like you said, everyone's asking for that check yeah. and nothing against the funeral industry, but yeah. it's, it's a business like anything else. Right. It's like, hey, we, we have this person. What do you want us to do with it? It's like, oh, we can't wait around. Right. Can't put it in the fridge. Oh, that sounds horrible. But, but it's like, what do you want us to do? Yeah. So those those moments, you know, yeah, they're difficult whenever that claim is made because we were talking about it's got to be tough in our business. Uh, but but that moment is the most rewarding of all. Right. It's sad. Don't get me wrong. But that's kind of where you get the like, man, this is why I do what I do and why I help sure. these families out. And, and the other part that's challenging, too, is in the meeting. Right. If I got a husband and wife, and we're talking about this stuff. And part of my whole humor approach is what I've been doing in my meetings for years. Because what I don't like doing is like, okay, something happened, Gino, bang, you're gone, right? No, I don't like doing that. So I use humor and say, listen, Gino, pretend you walked out your front door, right? And then all of a sudden you see a band of wild pug pirates come by and they kidnap you. And they take you onto their pirate ship, the Pug Sidon, and they brainwash you, Gino, that you're a pi you know, scallywagon pirate pug and you're living your best life you're ever. you pug, right? Yeah, like pug, dog. dog, woof, woof. I love pugs, by the way, right? And you never come home, right? Well, guess what else didn't come home? Your paycheck. <laughs> you're living your best life ever on this ship. Now, financially... If Gino, and I talked to your wife, if Gino didn't make it home because he was being a pirate pug, what would life be like without the income? You know, and, that, and they're like, well, I'd be tough. Well, let's talk about replacing the income, things like that. So again, taking a very difficult subject matter, because I see when I used to start in the business and like, I would have to, like, something tragic happened. Like I could just, the mood and the energy mm -hmm. in the room, just like, like, I don't want to talk about this. And so I just had to change it up. I will 100% agree with you because me and my wife, and I've even joked with Jessica um, about the fact that me and my wife probably talk about it maybe other every other day just as a joke mm -hmm. because you have to go into the conversation with hey look i love you you love me i love our kids i love our life i love that we're able to do these things yeah but yeah if i get taken off to pug island yeah there you go <laughs> pirate pug island. i'm not gonna be here and right. you know the thought of hey dude she's gotta deal with all these things is like that's overwhelming yeah. more than anything else. I'm like, okay, we're gonna do this. We did it, but yeah, we do joke with each other. Like, oh, I can't wait to get that money. It's like, who's gonna get it first? And so we're like, we that, always make that joke. But I think you have to, yeah. because yeah, in this life and in this world of the business you're in, it's uncomfortable. It's yeah. it's absolutely uncomfortable to talk about. Hey, what if you die tomorrow? I was like, oh shit, man, I don't even know you. Why are you wishing death on me? Yeah. Like, we're not. Right. But this is the business I'm in to take care of people once that happens. Right. And, and the fun also happens in those conversations afterwards. Just like, what would you do? What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. I've had so many comical conversations with husbands and wives about Sancho's and about going to Vegas and all kinds of stuff. I and tell so her, I'm just going to be at home uh, saying prayers <laughs> and poetry. 
Just take care of the kids, homeschooling them, there never going to go out again. She's like, yeah, right. You're going to have people over, and you're going to have a new girlfriend. I'm like, no, I, what? I, I don't. I don't. She's going to have money. I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it. One of my favorite <laughs> scenes about that, so um, it was Phil in, what's that, uh, with uh, Sofia Vergara? What's oh, Modern Family. Modern Family. So they're on the plane, and they're having that conversation, right? Like, would you remarry? And Claire's like, no, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And then she asked Phil, Phil, would you, yeah, her name's Sarah. Uh, (laughs) She's really organized and she's great with the kids. And the kids in the back, are you talking about Sarah? We love Sarah. And then Claire's like, something will happen to you. (laughs) I I will kill you before you get that poem. It is hilarious. Would you remarry? Yeah. So, (laughs) boom, it was funny. So tell me more about Mammoth and where did the name come from? And was it the announcement yesterday when I saw it? So it was the official announcement was yesterday, correct? Mm -hmm. So coming out, it's it's Facebook official, right? So doing social media (laughs) stuff. That's that's more than a a marriage. Right. (laughs) So I've been working on this behind the scenes for the past eight or nine months. And so when I was trying to figure out um, brand and logo and name, you know, I was spitballing with a buddy of mine. We're sitting down having some, you know, fun conversation. If you're not going to pick it up, I love pugs, right? Because I'm mm-hmm. about to say it again. So I had an idea about Purple Pug. Put Purple Pug insurance. Purple Pug. And he's like, no, dude, don't want to do that. And so going back and forth, it had to be something that people would take as serious, right? Like, okay, that's a brand that, that I can take serious and trust. Not goofy and silly like pirate pugs or whatever, Okay. But at the same time, not, not overly corporate-y. Like, you want, a, you want a brand and, and a logo and a name that people could be like, okay, so that's kind of fun and different and creative. And so he, my buddy, likes Mammoth. And so we went back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, you know what? Let's just run with it. You know, mm-hmm. Mammoth quotes, and that's it. So, and also, it's part of the theme about... You said he likes Mammoth, like the animal? Well, he's always liked the name of the brand, oh, Mammoth. Okay. Right? <laughs> I was like, does he have a Mammoth? No, he doesn't have a pet Mammoth. Those don't exist anymore, Tino, by the way. Hey, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I see some pretty crazy TikToks. Just and saying. they're telling me that they have one. They can no, do it. It's just a hairy elephant that people see. <laughs> that's all. They put hair on an elephant. It's a Mammoth. Mammoths don't exist. <laughs> Well, anymore. So, but part of it also is the idea and the theme of taking insurance out of the Stone Age. Mm-hmm. And so Ooh, watching my okay. commercial, right, you'll see, hey, it doesn't have to be painful, right? It doesn't have to be boring and feel like it's stuck in the Stone Age. So part of that theme of Mammoth is, is that taking it out of the Stone Age. Well, one thing you mentioned a while ago, and on that same note, that I didn't know, you said through an app that you can get a, a policy. Yeah. Like someone could be on their phone at a red light and be yeah. like, hey, let me pull this That's out. It's a real long quick. red light, but yes. <laughs> well, I don't know how long the app is. And uh, here, babe, fill this out for me. Right. And uh, have something. And, and if anything else, have something. And we see this all the time. This, again, culture thing. You see people all the time. They're like, hey, we're having a, a barbecue on Saturday for right. Uncle so and so. And I feel for them because, like I said, those bills come fast. Right. And it's like, wait, what? And a lot of times, if people in those situations, they might be ready to be going through a tough situation, mm-hmm. uh, they need it. And so, even if it's just a small, super small policy that people yeah. don't realize that costs pennies. Yeah, 100%. To get. If even just that. And, it, and so, part of what I was talking about earlier is that the technology is now there, not just because of underwriting, but also because of the application process. So most people out there think they have to sit down with the agent, visit, schedule meetings, go through all that painful process of applying and all of that. 15, 20 minutes now, these days, you can, really? on your phone, get it done. Yes, through apps. Again, there's underwriters, there's carriers and companies that offer that. However, right, here's the caveat. You got to be in decent health, Yeah. right? Because we're talking about people applying for a certain amount in a certain age at a certain health can be eligible done in 15, 20 minutes, offers on the table, policies, and is done. But sure, but if it's a little more complicated. It's a situation a little more complicated, Where's, right? Why does it get more complicated? Well, it's because now they have to go do some more underwriting and check some labs. We've got to check your records. We have to go do some other things. So just to be transparent so people know, what are the things that when they're looking at people, when they're going through that process and application, that they're like red flags? So every carrier is going to be different, but just kind of a generalization, if you will. You know, prescriptions. What kind of prescriptions is somebody mm-hmm. on? Blood pressure, cholesterol. Those are kind of some pretty typical ones. Heart stuff. Probably. Right, heart stuff. You know, some carriers would be like, mm, can't get you the instant offer. Um, you got to go through some underwriting. You got to give us some labs. You got to check your medical records. Other carriers are like, okay, how many milligrams and how long have you been diagnosed? They see that stuff. They're like, okay, he's fine. We can make an offer. And so red flags, red flags, like we ain't giving you an offer right now. We got to go check your medical records. I mean, we're talking about... People who have had like strokes and have cancer and some major health issues, Mm -hmm. um, not that they're going to get immediately denied. What can happen is like they just got to go do their due diligence and check. Sure. That's all. Right. But if you're in relatively decent health and if you're not applying for like two and a half, three, five million dollars, 
you know, 35, 40 years old, maybe even up to 45, there are carriers that I work with that can give you an instant offer and done in 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. It depends how fast your thumbs are, but, <laughs> but it's super easy now. Super easy. What a, what a weird way to, how do you say it? It's just a, it, people feel a certain way about insurance and there's only so many I really feel that I've been able to benefit from. And this is the one that I know I'm going to benefit from the most, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to be here. Right. Or if I do enjoy it, someone else is not going to be here. That's got to be the conversation that's tough for a lot of people and where I feel like that's maybe why they don't do it. And I've talked to people and I've told them before, sure. not that I'm like trying to sell it. I'm just like, hey, look, here's what we did, man. And they're like, no. And I'm like, why would, <laughs> why would you say no? Like out of all the things that we spend money on, once you set it up, and this is just me talking, once you set it up, these type of things, you forget about it. Yeah. And that's when it becomes like, okay, cool. And that's the way it should be. You just yeah. got to forget about it it's there don't focus on it keep right. living your life the way you want to live but just know that when something happens it'll be there most of the time you got to go through this once maybe twice in a lifetime yeah. so what i mean by that is you know get it done get a policy in place and you're good for whatever years that you set it up with you don't have to think about and mess with it but if you plan right then you only have to do it once but the cool part is and this is where it, it takes you know learning from people and the pros like yourself there's all these policies and these different things you can do where you can get it for your kids not so much in a bad way mm -hmm. but like a savings account right right so explain more what those are called and what those yeah, kind of policies so, so are. Those, do you do the, that those policies right i do that so those are permitted insurance policies okay so in the world of insurance life insurance specifically there's two major camps right you've got term insurance and what term is you kick the bucket somebody gets money that's it Okay. Right. That, that's termed it. out. Termed out. Right. And then the other one is permanent life insurance. And so permanent life insurance, kind of what you're describing, is a way that has what we call cash value. Mm -hmm. And so I always in my meetings and describe it. I even have some ads that I'm going to come out with that compare it to real estate because most people understand real estate for the most part. And so I'm like, hey, listen, if somebody had to go live in a half a million dollar house, right, you could tell them, Gino, there's two ways you could live under that roof. You can either rent the house or you can buy the house. Right. Mm -hmm. So life insurance is term is like renting. And owning is the permanent insurance of the cash value. The three major differences between these two camps, number one on the front end is the cost, right? When you're renting a property, you don't have to worry about down payments, insurance, maintenance, up, you know, maintenance any of that stuff. And so it's a lower financial commitment. So is term insurance. It's the cheapest way to get the most death benefit. So wait, term is cheaper? Term is okay. cheaper. Term is cheaper. It's the, it's the, you get the most death benefit for the least amount of payment of premium. Versus if you want to be the homeowner now, well, you got to come up with a down payment. Usually you got to pay for taxes, you got to pay for insurance and it's a bigger financial commitment. So with life insurance, if you want to own it, it's a bigger commitment, you know, financially. Mm -hmm. The other difference is going to be the term and the timeline and how you pay. So when you're renting, let's just say here at this place, this lease, you like it, you want to renew your lease. What's the landlord going to tell you? Gino, I love you. It's going to be less. No. no. <laughs> They're like, oh, wait, y'all, I should have been raising now the last six years when I didn't raise it. Now it's going to be this much more. Take it a loop. C correct. Right. So it's always going up. Rent's going up. So in a term policy, when you hear 10, 15, 20, it's a literal term in the contract. So after that 15 years is up and you still want the insurance, guess what? You're older, mm. right? Life insurance, Gino, you know, is like having fun. Did you know that? No. The older you get, the more it costs. <laughs> Remember the days you're playing with the box when you were a baby? Yep. And now, how are oh, your easy. toys? How much do your toys cost now? They're right. Too much. A lot more than a cardboard box. Okay. Yep. And so, what happens when that term is up? It costs more. Okay. Just like the lease at a property, commercial property. When you own it, like a mortgage, and it's a permanent insurance policy, it could stay level, just like a mortgage does. And then the last difference between these two camps and kind of the idea of saving money for the kids and the kids' policies. And so, when you're renting a property, no equity, doesn't go on the balance sheet, it's not an asset whatsoever. Term insurance is the same thing. Okay. Got it. Permanent insurance, equity. Our equity in those policies is what we call cash value. And so many times a good strategy for the kiddos, because the best time to get this stuff is when you're young and healthy, mm -hmm. right? Kids, young and healthy. Yep. And so when you start policies for them, it does two things. And it's never really about the death benefit. Like, and that's what freaks people out so sure. much. I know, I have insurance for the kids, especially it, culturally. Do you think they're saying it because it's like you're putting it out there? Correct. So even culturally, it's like, I'm equal, porque no? You know why? Talk about it. Yeah. yeah. And so I have to tell families, it's not what it is, it's what it does. Mm -hmm. Drop the label of life insurance death benefit and think about what it does. There is a cash value in that policy that when they turn 18, 20, or whenever it is, they have some money set aside that grows far better than what a savings account can do for them. And at the same time, I tell them, you're insuring their insurability. So I say, hold, hang in there with me. At some point in your child's life, this stuff is going to matter. 
Mm -hmm. They're going to get married one day. God willing, they're going to have kids. You're going to have grandkids. And what you've done at a young age is you've already ensured the fact that they're going to have some protection for your future grandkids one day. Because we don't know what curveballs life is going to give us. We don't know if diabetes, heaven forbid, is going to pop up for my kid who's now 18 or 22 years old, and now I can't get them, or they can't get insurance when it matters. Sure. And so as a parent, what you can do is start that foundation, have a small savings account for them within these policies and the cash value, but also providing that first layer of protection for their future, for their families one day. Hmm. So yeah, that's what it is. And it's hard to get over the hump sometimes about the idea of life insurance for kids. But again, it's what it does. It's not what it is for, for families that come in that visit you and for anybody else that's listening that is like, Hey, you know what? Maybe I should set up a meeting. How do they do it? Do you you have an in-person meeting? I don't want to push people to the app because I think that, and I would recommend for anybody that goes to this, have a 30 to 30 minutes, an hour conversation with somebody to answer all the awkward questions that you've avoided and and just know just to do it. What, Where do you recommend? Yeah. So one of the value propositions that Mammoth quotes and the uniqueness that we offer is is the consumer has the choice, right? And and we're, we've worked really hard to build out a DIY path, right? So where they can go to the website, click through, and I've created video modules that literally the way I just explained to you term insurance versus permanent insurance, I have a video module that does the same thing. I have a video module at the guidance that talks about what the right amount that you need. So I've taken my nine years of meeting experience and I've, I've created kind of like a YouTube on your own pace. And I really, I want feedback too. I want people to go through that if they so choose to, and hopefully they make good informed decisions. But at any point, you know, they could always hit the button and say, I need to talk. So on the front end, if people want to have this conversation, they have the option. They go, you know what? I do want to meet. They can schedule Zoom here in Corpus Christi. You can still meet with me. You know, we can do whatever. Whatever you want is what we provide. And if they go down the DIY path, and if they get stuck or hung up for whatever reason, they always have accessible that button. Say, hey, do I need to talk to you? Mm-hmm. And then we're going to schedule a Zoom meeting. There's my Calvi. You can schedule time with me. I like that. So there's there's paths. You have total control. I like that you called it a, a DIY path because for a lot of people that take that leap into uh, doing something like that, life insurance, mm-hmm. uh, buying a car or buying a house or just anything big in their life. There's a lot of people that will fear the fact that they probably got to learn some shit. It's like, all right, before I do this, I'm probably going to have to sit down right. and do a couple of things. It's not going to be a quick little transaction. And I think that turns away a lot of people too. Right. So the fact that people can do it on their own pace, which is why I like to do these podcasts. I like to do uh, PDFs and eBooks and mm-hmm. posts where people at their own pace, if they're really, Hey, I need to go watch these videos. They can go watch them, but if they're not, I'll just chill back. And then, oh, wait, I watched the videos. I need a call. I need need to meet. Right. So that's that's kind of what we've done over here is we've created those options. And people want control ultimately, right? Because sometimes they want to get the coverage, but they don't want to deal with the process. And that's why I started Miami Quotes to say, hey, listen, go do it on your own. Well, it's crazy how much social media like will show um, uh, medicinal stuff now. Mm -hmm. It used to be the ads that I would see on social media. I'm not sure how much you actually see on your on your page, but it was more shopping. It was more just like uh, merchandise. And now the fact that there's like prescriptions you can get online. There's like you said, there's you can see doctors online. Right. Uh, the other day, I did a, a pers- uh, I was in a meeting with a doctor, and it was like a FaceTime. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? Like I'm at the doctor's office, but I'm FaceTiming. <laughs> the doctor in some Houston or something like that, but they do that with everybody and every business. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's cool that you're able to use that information. Where else are you on social? So I'm going to Instagram. And so I'm building out those social media profiles. I'm going to start getting on TikTok. So is there so a mammoth quotes for there is right now? now? Yeah. And so just being released yesterday, really. Mm-hmm. So we're going to start Step building up, up some more go. content. <laughs> I know I got to set up fast TikTok, everything, but like, I'm so excited because now, now I get to do these things, right? I get to do podcasts and YouTube channels and TikTok videos and all kinds. So you're going to see some silly stuff come from me on TikTok as well. So I've got ideas and plans for that. And again, it's all about engaging. It's being comical about a topic that people don't want to talk about and, and just having fun. Well, that's what I enjoyed doing when I first started real estate. Because luckily, um, when I started real estate, I started here at our brokerage and Chris is the broker and James and they're like, whatever, just don't get a suit. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's it. It's the only rule here. Yeah. Other places. <laughs> and just so people don't, people You've know that. you walked a fine line with some content. You're like, well, I don't know if I should have posted just that. Just so but, people yeah. know, uh, I get fines for that. Just so people know, <laughs> like when you go to big box brokerages, there's sometimes, yeah, they got rules too. It's like, hey, right. 
I'm just making up a name. Kathy, you can't do that. You can't post that. It's like, why not? Uh, I was able to show a lot of information, very uh, transparent. Like, hey, this is what I paid. I have my credit sucked. Or da, 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 da. Right. And showing all those things. People are like, oh, you can't talk to clients like that. It's like, I'm not. I'm talking, I'm, that's the way you have to talk to clients. In yeah. the same way, you have to talk to clients the way that you would talk to your best friend, especially in situations where, again, when people are spending a lot of money, they want to feel as comfortable as possible. Yeah. When people are signing up for things that are long term, because a lot of stuff that we do in life is very, we're going to take this vacation, we're done. I'm not going to see you again. I'm going to go buy this car, have a couple of years, I'm not going to see you again. I'm buy a house, maybe I'll see you in a couple of years. But uh, they take a long time to go right. through those paths. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, shit, um, let me take my time with this. Yeah, yeah. Now, so going back real quick, I did want to touch base. You're saying um, you went through it, you have it, you've got protection in place for the family. And it's one of those transactions that comes every month that you're cool with, but a lot of other people because they don't see it. Right. So one of the challenges, you know, is being able to educate people enough to have them understand uh, why it matters, because everything else that we insure, like in a lifetime, guess what? In our cars, somebody's going to hit us or we're going to bump mm-hmm. into somebody and we're like, OK, I'm glad I paid for it. Right. Or I dropped my phone. Oh, I'm glad I had some insurance on that. Whatever. Life insurance is one of those deals that you don't get to say, oh, I'm glad I had it. You go. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But your family is going to be so grateful that you move forward and that you pulled the trigger on that stuff. And they're the ones that are going to have the gratitude. That is why in my will, I have it. They have to build a statue at the funeral, Dude, <laughs> at the cemetery. You know, it's, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I love it. One of my silly and commercial ads me like this, <laughs> just like making it. It's rain. so funny. You say that because <laughs> in, in my own language and context, when I talk about a benefit, I literally say statue. I'm like, listen, your beneficiary is going to get one giant check. They could do whatever they want with it. They could go to Vegas and blow it. Woohoo! They could have a life-size bronze statue to Where commemorate your epic, fu- your epic life. All right, Jess, I need your help on this. <laughs> if I die, unfortunately, I need you to take your cut from, the, from this, uh, this check. And you need to make sure that Anna doesn't have no like girls night to Vegas or like, <laughs> go to Nashville or wherever these, where the girls go now. Is it Nashville? Well, <laughs> yeah, at least six so, months. <laughs> so that's, that's where maybe in the future... On a podcast, you get a good estate planning guy that comes in. Oh, I'm going to have her in here. I'm going right? to have her in here, and I'm going to have the estate planning. Yeah, get yeah. the estate planning person in here, and, and that's kind of how to help safeguard, control, protect, and, and that stuff. I mean, she can help you out, sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> make sure the girls' night in Vegas doesn't happen. <laughs> or you can really make sure by doing some proper Damn. estate planning. Get, like, restrictions. The cops show up. <laughs> they stop her at TSA. <laughs> oh, how you doing, man? Miss Montal? Well, yeah, sorry. You're on the no fly list. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We're the fun police. What? Your husband, his wishes. She'll sorry. be on a Greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> Greyhound only. We're going anyways, girls. Um, well, man, what else is going on in your life, bro? We're not talking about all business stuff. How have you been doing? Dude, I've been good, man. It's been fun. You know, one thing I did want to talk about, because we're, you're doing the 75 hard. Yeah, so I did that. Um, we were playing basketball. I was, that was a, a one of the attempts, yes. One I of the multiple attempts. I did not attempts. finish it then. Okay. Uh, I, st- I tried it. I heard of it in 2020. Never got to actually finish it. Um, last year, August 1st, I had a, um, had a trip to Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And when I came back, I took a week off. A week off. And it wasn't because I needed it. It was because I was dying. Like, I was just so miserable. Yeah. I was at a weight that I'd never been to. And I was like, dude, what am I doing? And then it was like, oh, we got a Vegas trip, too. So we went to Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, there's no reason I should. And this is when I heard the Gary Vee talk about, you should do podcasts. podcast. I'm like, I should do a podcast. Um, and I got back, and I just felt miserable. Yeah. And I had been trying through 2020, 2021 to stay on top of it. And it just got away from me. Uh, even worse. I got to like 340, 350, and I just... And I knew that because I didn't get on the scale. And I was like, I know that number's really high. But August 1st last year, I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for the kids. Uh, the last day was October 16th, awesome. which was my daughter's birthday. So yeah. it was like perfect timing. Uh, I did it, finished it. I've been trying to maintain. But yeah. I think like anybody, everybody has life where it kind of can pull you back into your so old habits. So you're just over here from completing it? Is that what I understand? Uh, a year ago, October? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So just so last week, year. a year ago, I had like photos popping up where it's yeah. like the last days and drinking my water and stuff like that. And I've been able to maintain, uh, grow a little more muscle. Uh, we did some fun stuff this year. Um, yeah. We did a marathon. We did Spartan races. We've done five Ks, half marathons. But yeah, it's, it's tough, bro. And I, I think like anybody else, now the holidays are here and I'm like, oh, fuck. How many attempts did you have at it? That was my 13th time okay. I tried it. Okay. And I didn't want to do it to where it was like, because there was times before where I gave up on the 75 after like two or three weeks. And I told myself, I could just keep going. I can keep saying that I'm going. Yeah. I keep saying that I did it. But I wanted to do it to do it where people would be like, that's not fucking possible. Because <laughs> you've tried it. Are you done, right? So, so I tried it probably about three or four times. And the furthest I got in, 
and this is, a, this is a story because be careful reading the instructions, right? <laughs> you're going to hear things you don't want to hear. I, you know, I was 30 days in. 30, I was like, dude, I feel great. I got this. I got momentum. I'm in rhythm. I'm rocking. Boom, 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 right? The whole gallon of water, two workouts a day, you name it. The whole 75 hard deal. Until, until I listened to a podcast with Andy, mm -hmm. right? And he was going through the instructions. And then he talked about, because if you look on Facebook, you'll see the rules, bullet points, mm -hmm. and that's what I followed. I didn't read a book. I didn't listen to him. I said, I'm going to do that. Can I guess which one you messed up on? Go ahead. Uh, was it the second workout outside? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Crushed me. So when I, when I heard him say that, it was 30 days in. I was like, no. <laughs> this whole time, I'm waking up at 4.30 in the morning. I go to the gym. When I'm done, then I go hit shoreline, and I go my run outside, whatever, and I'm rocking 30 days until I heard that. And I was like. But you're on shoreline. You're outside. I know, but no back-to-back consecutive mm. workouts it has to be inconvenient so it was super convenient for me to start my day at yeah. 4 30 go to the gym and then go run right afterwards he's like no 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 knock it all out it's got to be a different point of the day different part and so i was like do i do day 31 just do this <laughs> or am i at zero or do i go to kiko's and i went to i went to kiko's <laughs> and i went to day zero and i was like oh. and i tried a couple more times after that and I tried uh, again uh, this year. And, you know, a lot of people, whenever I post that last year uh, and I see the members popping up now and I see the comments and I see people go, I'm going to try them and try that. And I see them, unfortunately, still at the same place they were last year. I see them posting different things. Uh, I solely wanted to do it just because I wanted to feel like I did the impossible. Yeah. And then anything else that I put in front of me, I could do it, too. Because last year or is it this year, this year we did the marathon. I never thought I could do a marathon and we did it and awesome. I signed up. I was going to do a half and I already gave up. So, <laughs> so like I said, it comes in waves yeah. of motivation. You just have to keep no, finding sure. it every single day. For sure. I've, I've done before. But you look great. Tough mutter. Thanks, the last man. Time I, I, I appreciate that. I think it's more genetics than just, just like, yeah. you know, lifestyle. But <laughs> <laughs> I love going back to the video you made. I'm going to have to post this on. When I put this, so this is going on YouTube. It's going everywhere else. When I put this, I'll put that video. Uh, in part of the video, you talk about, oh, I'm in great shape and you're doing like some shoulder press. Yeah. And then it kind of changes all the numbers back to, all right, so I'm actually this age and this is how much it's going to be. And then it shows you like, <laughs> it shows you like dying on the treadmill where's that where's that a uh, uh, what's the gym downtown oh it's uh it's gonna be aaron pinita's place it's all good all good no, all good fitness, all good fitness yeah, yeah. Sorry. oh marlene's place yeah mm -hmm. uh so it was all downtown who made that video for you so santiago mm -hmm. santiago uh gosh, i forget his last name starts with the v i I'm so blessed to come across this guy i saw some content online through through a friend of mine and i reached out and said hey dude who made that that's fantastic and he's like dude he came from california connect with him and uh, I said, okay, great. So I reached out, and he just did an incredible job. Oh, he flew job. in? No, well, he's here in Texas oh, okay. now. He's here, he's here in Texas. I was like, damn, son. <laughs> no, 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 no. I ain't got a budget, dude. I'm going to start it, bro. <laughs> not, not on that kind of budget yet, right? Does he do any real estate stuff? He has, yes. He so, does. you know, we have a lot of media people that help us with our stuff. I film a lot of our stuff as well. And it's cool to see different people's ideas, especially when you have an idea. It's like, hey, like, I'm going to give this to you. Yeah. Take it, which I'm sure a lot of that was because you had a lot of cuts. And for people to understand, like, that's a lot of shots. So, so what the magic between the, him and I and how we created that, um, I have the imagination. So everything that you saw was, was really my idea, okay, as far as what was said and what's, you know, this and that. The magic behind what he does, the angles, all the, the smart little things that he sees. Like, for example, when we're in um, uh, the downtown video game place, Retro, mm -hmm. right? So we're in Retro. Like, he did a great job at like even pushing the start button when I say, hey, let's get started. I, I didn't even think about that. But those are the small things that can make a massive difference from a, from a stylistic standpoint, right, and what he does. And so I come with the imagination, the vision, the idea, the creativity, and he really just refines it all and makes it so good and so clean. In fact, if it's okay, I'll share his, his link to his website on this podcast at the bottom sure. or wherever it's at. And so he does a phenomenal job. Yeah. Well, what's hard about marketing these days, and you're going to know and you've already seen in the past, is that – you have to be so fast with it and you have to be quick, 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 not only to put it out, but the video itself has to get people's attention so fast because there's so much out these days right. that I think the rule is like three seconds. If you don't get your client or potential leads attention within three seconds of your content, right. they're going to keep scrolling. And yeah. so that's why you'll see a lot of these on what you exactly what you did. You had paint on your face in the first shot Correct. in the backyard. I'm like, what? Smurf? <laughs> <laughs> I knew Let that was going to happen. I knew it. Face. It's okay. I was like, man, looking back, I'm like, it's going to happen. People, uh, I'm going to see the con whatever. I'm going to roll with it. It works. <laughs> I stayed and I was like, what is this even talking about? I, Cause I didn't know, I didn't know the name yet. So yeah. I was like, I know it's Louise, but what is the, what is this video? Yeah. And, um, going forward with like more marketing stuff, 
that's going to be the fun stuff you get to actually do. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is when you're doing marketing these days, the old days of phone book and bus benches and billboards and static stuff. Yeah is no longer there. You have to put yourself out there right. in every single business. If you look at any successful business in town that's done well for years and years, but also within the last couple of years, because they've had to deal with all the different competition from pe- mm-hmm. different eyes going everywhere, it's all people that put out consistent, different yeah. content. It doesn't have to be the same thing all the time. It can be different. It can be totally out of the box. Like a majority of the stuff that we post has nothing to do with real estate. Mm-hmm. It's just like, here's a reminder. Right. Hey, it's me. I'm in the ghost shirt. Yeah. Go look yeah. at the other stuff. <laughs> it's funny, right? Go look at the other stuff below. And that's yeah. what I would continue to keep doing. Yeah. It's, it's getting harder and harder to get people's attention. Like it really is. And so we have to be creative on how we do that. Yeah. Look, look, hold on. Let me show you why. I'll tell you why. Look at this kid. See him? Yeah. Since he woke up, he's been on the <laughs> It's hard. That's it's all hard. I do. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's a challenge, but it's fun. You know, it definitely is. Are you going to put your kids in it? Because you know how many kids you got? I got two. Two sweet girls. Are they going to be in the videos? Uh, Yeah, for sure. I'll put them in somehow. Pro tip. I have in the past. I have in the past, and so now we'll do some fun stuff. But now you actually get to do like anything you want. I can do anything I want. Are you dressing up for Halloween? Um, No, I don't plan on it. No? no. Why not? Come on, Dan. I don't know. Give me a recommendation. What should I do? Uh, well, what's Target? There's no more stuff there. So okay. go to Spirit. I'm sure they got plenty of stuff still. Yeah. Uh, as far as like what's hot right now, is, I don't think there's anything hot right now. Last year we all did um, Stranger Things. Okay. And so I dressed up as Eddie. Was his name Eddie? The guy like the punk rocker. Did are you caught up with Stranger Things? No. Did you no, watch it no. at all? Have you ever seen it? At can all? I just borrow your shirt and your hat and just go out no. and throw my beard out? <laughs> you know, I have been not mistaken, but like you resemble. Gino. I think if you had a full beard, yeah. When I had a full beard, mm. correct. Just kind of. Personality wise, whatever this and that, blah blah blah. And I was like, "Is it my ink? Is that why?" I think I don't, it's, it's just a, a tall, dark Hispanic. There's not a lot of those. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> small, right small group, small group. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's happened in the past. So let me just borrow your hat, and your shirt, bro. That's who I'll be for Halloween. You can do it all you want. Okay, you pay the bills too. <laughs> I'll give you all the no, bills I'm good, as well. I'm good with that. Uh, Gino Flores. There's been jokes where he's had over the years because um, he's been doing radio just as long as. Uh. Um, I think I did radio. I'm sorry. I didn't take that back. He's done radio longer than me. And then when I left, he kept going. So he's been doing it for like twice as long, I think, as I ever did radio. Uh-huh. But it's always funny when people be like, oh, yeah, I listen to you every single day. They tell me this now. Yeah. I'm like, you listen to every single day? It's like, I love it. Every uh, Carmen calls? I love it. I'm like, that's not me. You're like, Bro. And so he's telling me the same thing. He's like, man, I get confused a lot. He goes, man, if they can confuse our bank accounts, that'd be great. That'd be- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you can take all the bills. <laughs> mix it up. Let's mix it up. Let's literally do what that. I told him. But now he's good. No, I'll think about it. I'll think my, my girls are definitely, they have their um, Halloweens. They're these squashmallow super cute little soft things it's a oh, i know I squash mellows are it's yeah a they have a halloween costume yeah they're like giant squash mellows <laughs> yeah it's awesome squish mellows squish squish thank you, you know. <laughs> see i don't even know squash mellows gino do you know what squish mellows are bro i bought the off brand is why it's Papa, squash mellow the off brand i saved a little money okay oh, let's be the first time come here gino come here do you know what squish mellows are tell us what they're they're like these little plushies they're what there's like these little plushies, like plushies, yeah. like animal stuffed animals. Mm-hmm. And do you have any? Do you have any at home? I think so. Do you have some or not have some? I think Gianna has multiple. Hey, Gino. I think you're lying. I think you have a couple. I do. Gino, Gino, <laughs> here. I got a dad joke for you. I got a dad joke for you. Where do the bad dogs go? They go to the pound, son. Pound it. <laughs> That's right. Here's your dad joke. I don't, that was that was better than a dad joke. That was <laughs> that was like interactive dad joke. That's next level dad joke. Just saying, ah, dude, I, dude, and even like she'll be the witness. I'm gonna use that today because we're gonna yeah. have a trunk or treat later on today uh, at Home Source Mortgage. <laughs> this will be a promo for the thing. So Home Source Mortgage later on today off of airline right before you get to Cimarron, they're having a trunk or treat, and so like we've been joking about what costumes we're gonna wear. That's what James is doing here right now. We're gonna set up for the tent, uh-huh. and I'm guarantee I'm gonna use that tonight because there's gonna be kids everywhere. <laughs> love it, love it. Where the bad dogs go, just do but it. But I'm at, because there's so many, I have to get them in a group. You know what else you should promote or I should promote I don't know so there I did a funny video years ago. You want. so so you it got was, a SoundCloud um, you're a rapper it was after no it, it's just a thought right it's the day after Halloween and to all my CPAs rally up around this this needs to be a thing please it needs to become November 1st is national teach your kids about taxes day why November 1st bro it's the day after Halloween the dad tax. Oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I'm just. Oh, then I'm already doing that. We already do it. We already do it. I remember I made this little video and had my girls with me it was a couple years ago. We poured everything out, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, girls, I'm going to teach you a little something. <laughs> this is what we call FICA. <laughs> <laughs> Over here's federal income tax. Hey, Dad, can we, tra- can we trade you more Smarties if you give us more? <laughs> no. <laughs> 
And so, I, I don't know, because we already do it already. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, wrap it up with a little bit of an educational component, right? But maybe, let me ask you a question. Because they work for it. They go trick-or-treat and knock on doors. They work for I, the I agree with you. And here's what's really weird. I remember doing that, and bro, I was so set for weeks where I just treasured this bag of candy, mm-hmm. and I would eat a couple of pieces, and I'd put it back in the fridge, or I'd put it back on top of the fridge, or in the pantry, and hide it, right? Yeah. And that would make it last for such a long time. These kids are so fucking spoiled <laughs> <laughs> that there's never a time where they, uh, for all the Halloweens we've had, they love going door to door. They love getting a big old bag of candy and yeah. putting it on the table. Yeah. But there's never been a time afterwards where they even mess with it. It just like sits there. They just there's Dude. access to candy all the time in my house, which is unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Luckily, they have my my wife's jeans and they're staying skinny. But when I was little, there wasn't like that. There wasn't an abundance of candy anywhere. We didn't have a candy drawer. We didn't have candy bags. We didn't have candy in bulk. Like it just wasn't a thing. So brilliant idea I came across last night. I'm hanging out in Oasis Brewery, right? And I'm hanging out. My family's out of town. They're in Florida. They're hanging out with some friends. My girl's my wife. So I'm kind of here like, okay, let me go have some fun a little bit and hang out. I'm in Oasis Brewery and enjoying a nice cold beer. And the bartender, I can't, I don't know her name. And we're talking about Halloween. And I was like, that's such a great idea. I've never heard of that before. She heard it or does it. They call it the switch witch. The switch witch. Oh. You, have you talked about this? You've heard about this before? That's why you get on TikTok, bro. bro. It's all the new trends. I saw is it? this. Okay, my bad. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. I'm not relevant. No, I'm, I'm, I'm relevant. only telling you because I just saw a video it's a, thing, like, yeah. a day ago. I was like, dude, that's awesome. So it, for those of you who don't know, what happens is you tell your kiddos, pick your favorite candies or whatever, give them X amount. And then the rest, because you talked about this giant bag of candy that's just sitting around all the time, magically the next day because of the switch, which turns into... But they have to decide. Thing, whatever it they, is. Yeah, they have to be the ones that say, yeah, I'm going to do the switch or I'm going to give it up. I would and just that switch it. their decision. No. Oh, you're just doing it. <laughs> like, oh, it's like the tooth fairy, The right? one I saw was more like a deal. Like, hey, look, I'm going to give you this, uh, but you're going to train your candy. So that way the kid's like, yeah, I'll make the decision. I'll give it the candy. So yeah. that way they can't say anything afterwards. Like, yeah. you decided. You didn't Customize want the strategy. How's you're that? saying just do it. Just customize the strategy. You know what they want. Just switch it out. Be like, it's the switch witch. I don't know. So We pulled that prank one time because there was a while where I think it was uh, Jimmy Kimmel had that thing. It's like a prank. Oh, Remember, it was like parents eating all the candy so and they would funny. record it. Dude, these I've never kids. tried that, but yes. I see these ones don't care. They're like, yeah. all right. Yeah, they don't care. Can it's we go to Stripes? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go to Stripes? I need to get some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, looking forward to all that fun stuff, you know, going out and trick or treating the kid. My kids are nine and seven, so it's still pretty you know, close to it's mine. It's still fun. He's for us. nine. Gianna's 12. Right on. So, yeah. Right on. Well, bro, thank you for coming in today. Yeah. If you could. Uh, one more time, let us know where we can find all your content, all your business, anything about you. Yeah, so you can find uh, a- anything related to Mammoth Quotes on our website, www.mammothquotes.com. You can go find and like our page on Facebook, Instagram. And I'm going to start with TikTok, right? So I am. So you can do that. And uh, yeah, give us a follow. Give us a like. And by all means, here's what I would really encourage just being new. This is kind of beta phase for us. And there's a lot of feedback that I just love. I would love... For, for people who are watching this, just to get on there and just start navigating through the process. Start getting information. I want to know if it's valuable, if it was no pressure, if it was seamless, and if it was easy. Like, I really want that feedback. Even if you don't buy a policy, right? That's mm-hmm. totally okay. I just want you to engage in the process. Help me out by giving me some valuable feedback. And then I'm going to implement, implement that and make it better. Like, I would, uh, better. I've done those before. Like, hey, I have this new, we used to have one of those like live web, um, webinars mm-hmm. and have the video pop up and live chat and stuff like that go watch this and did you like some free starbucks like hey free or whoever yeah free local comp- coffee uh go tell me what you think give me some honest feedback i'll get you a digital gift card yeah. i bet you you'll get it pretty easy and yeah. you get the hits and you get more content you know I'll, but if i can give you one tip yeah uh don't stray away from your personal page just okay. keep it going keep it going personal page mm-hmm. gotcha don't just don't be behind the mask of the business be you yeah yeah i you know i I took a time out for a while i used to post a ton of content on the personal stuff and then just kind of going through this like self-reflective what am i doing next transition again i've been working on this for eight nine months but even before that well congratulations that's not an easy thing to do take that leap especially when you go on your own yeah and and there's some really cool stuff to be on the lookout so please follow us on facebook and and all the other places and instagram i've got i create an animation that has pirate pugs (laughs) I literally have an animation that's done that has pirate pugs. Do you so. ever mess around with AI stuff? No. Okay, I'm going to show you something super goofy in a second. You're Please. Love it. But hey, I appreciate yeah, Luis dude. coming in. Uh, two things. One, this is Gino's table. I believe everybody brings something great to the table. Sure. You obviously bring a lot. If you could, grab one of our Sharpies, sign the table. You got it. Uh, and we'll get you out of here, sir. Get you on to do me. Pug do me pug. a favor. What's up? Practice that dad joke. Let me hear oh, it. Oh, come on. Let me see. Let me see. I just want to do it right I'm now. professional, bro. Come on, bro. let's go. Let's professional. go. <laughs> appreciate you, bro. I got Thanks. it. Thank you, sir. <laughs>